industries do you sense are or, or perhaps will be vulnerable in this crisis? And, and probably the inverse of that is um, any particular industries you think might, uh, might benefit from the crisis? Well, this is a really interesting question. Of course, the extent of this depends on the depth of this crisis and how long it goes on and how far consumer behaviour changes. But some of the industries, there are industries that could fail and never come back. There are probably industries that were already challenged. You could think of the department store industry. Uh, they were getting challenged from online retailing. It could be that, that there is such a shift into online behaviour that it accelerates the demise of them and maybe some other bricks and mortar retailers. They may never come back if the, if the accelerant here of moving to new business models is the final death nail on some of those business models. Whether that happens or not will depend how deep this uh, downturn is. You, you could think of the traditional media industry. They were already facing difficulty with the shift to digital uh, media. It could be a number of these newspapers and television networks actually go out of business, that this is the final straw that if we have a recession and their advertising revenues disappear and their viewers were shifting anyway, we've seen a massive shift to online streaming entertainment. So it's accelerating uh, behavioural changes. There, there are other industries that, that I, I would tell you won't fail, but they could take a very long time to recover. You could think of businesses probably in the travel-related uh, industries, you think of cruise liners. You know, how many people over 70 are going to get on floating, floating Petri dishes in the next five years? Mm. And, and thinking, even if there is an, I could get stuck on one of these things for a month floating around being trying to get left off. Uh, these things, those images we've had on the news, how long lasting and profound will they be? I, I would say they will survive, but they could go through a very dark and very, very long winter. And of course, these businesses to get cash flow positive, they need like 80% occupancy. So, you know, if they get to 30% occupancy, they just can't operate. So, you know, that, that, that is an industry. You could think of oil and gas companies. We, we could be in a period with reduced demand in the world where the oil price stays low for a very extended period of time. And therefore, higher cost uh, producers like the American shale industry or the tar sands industry in, in Canada could literally get wiped out. With climate change and everything else, they may never come back here. And there is certain real estate in the world, if we're shifting to online behaviour and moving people out of physical retailing, you could see certain retailing assets, maybe not be wiped out, but may, may have to be repurposed. Some of these large shopping malls may not ever be able to fill their total spaces again. So what happens to that? And and the rents that were payable, which were a very high percentage of turnover, they may have to materially reduce their rents in order to enable retailers to survive. So those, the value of those assets could be permanently uh, impaired. And you ask a very interesting question, who will benefit? Well, just as the accelerants are killing some industry, the accelerants are benefiting other, other industries. You could think of online retail. You could think of what's happening to Amazon or Alibaba at the moment huge additional adoption of their services is occurring and that could be permanent. We could think of the entertainment industry, the move of the, uh, the streaming services in gaming and, uh, and, and, and watching video online like Netflix. They're getting many, many more subscribers to their business models. You could think of what we're doing. We're sitting on a Zoom uh, teleconference at the moment. We're using Microsoft Teams at our work. This is changing behaviour of people of being up. We didn't even know what Zoom was before we started. We had Microsoft Teams in the office. We never used it. I now use it probably five times a day. And I think it's changing our, our behaviour. And another one I would say is hygiene products. I don't think people's um, use of toilet paper is going to fundamentally change during this, even though they thought it was going to fundamentally change. But I really don't see the use case being fundamentally different for toilet paper. But for... <laughs> For hygiene products, I actually see the use case will fundamentally change for a long period of time. I think in surface care and hand washing and sanitizers, I think people will change through the whole winter season, through flu seasons for a very extended period of time. People will be using more of these, uh, of these products. Um, we are having it drummed into us that hygiene for the spread of things like influenza is incredibly important. And therefore, I think that's going to be a habitual change. It will last for, um, may, for, for a very, very long 
period of time. So there are winners out of this, but the extent of it will depend upon how long it goes on for and how ingrained the consumer behaviour becomes. And perhaps, and this might be a little way off, but um, if the air is a little clearer for you, is there any sectors that you'd be keen to explore, you know, um, perhaps coming away from your current defensive position? Well, we... we, we... We, we're splitting it to down into two areas. Obviously, we've got a lot of cash at the moment. We've tried to position the portfolio that actually still has quite a lot of technology in it, but technology which we don't think is that susceptible to the economic uh, cycle, particularly the software side of this and the platform side of uh, technology. But then we own a number of very defensive businesses. We own the largest hygiene business in the world, Record Ben Kaiser, which uh, we've been adding to the uh, 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 position. We still really like the quick service restaurants. It's been a very tough period because people haven't been going out. They've been shut down in their homes. But we think when people move around, they're going to go back to McDonald's. And actually, they tra trade trade down during an economic uh, downturn. And Starbucks, we're still very uh, uh, confident of. But you know, there are businesses that 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 are more economically dependent that we like a lot. Um, but whether we go into those ones first will depend on how we think the economies are going to recover. Uh, if we think we're in a five-year downturn, we may not load up on luxury goods. Uh, we've reduced our luxury goods exposures. If we take a 20-year view, they're absolutely uh, uh, fine. There could be some travel-related expenditure stuff during this cycle. It would be a wonderful time to buy. Travel will come back. But we want to get a view of what we think that shape of that recovery would be before we would go into that in, in, into that territory. And of course, there are some businesses that are more defensive, where we could be going to in a period of even lower or zero interest rates. And some of those businesses whose revenue lines hold up and the discount rate goes down could come out of the valuable if there's an extended downturn. So how we spend that cash will depend upon what we see the shape of the sort of next five years.